And that's because there's no quicker way to stall the forward momentum of your story than to have your main character waffle back and forth between two love interests for too long. So yes, your main character should have a hard time choosing between both potential partners, but if you drag this decision on too long, then you're probably going to annoy your readers and make them lose interest in what's happening in your story. Welcome to the Fiction Writing Made Easy podcast. My name is Savannah Gilbo, and I'm here to help you write a story that works. I want to prove to you that writing a novel doesn't have to be overwhelming. So each week, I'll bring you a brand new episode with simple, actionable, and step-by-step strategies that you can implement in your writing right away. So whether you're brand new to writing or more of a seasoned author looking to improve your craft, this podcast is for you. So pick up a pen and let's get started. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips for writing better and more compelling love triangles. And I wanted to talk about this topic today because it's no secret that readers love a well-written love triangle, right? But writing a compelling love triangle is easier said than done. And I think this is why love triangles tend to get a bad reputation sometimes because readers sometimes feel that love triangles are going to be predictable or cliche. And that's usually true if they aren't well executed. Love triangles can actually be wonderful plot devices that can have beautiful and moving results if they're well-developed and well-written. So before we get into my top 10 tips, let's quickly talk about what a love triangle is so that we're all on the same page. A love triangle is a relationship that takes place between three or more characters. So usually this looks like character A has to choose between characters B and C who both love character A. Sometimes there's a relationship between the two suitors, but sometimes there's not. Some popular examples of love triangles include Elizabeth Bennet in Pride and Prejudice, who has to choose between Mr. Darcy and Mr. Wickham. Another one is Bella Swan in Twilight, who has to choose between Edward and Jacob. And then there's someone like Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games, who has to choose between Peeta and Gail. So now that we're all on the same page about what a love triangle is, let's dive into my top 10 tips for writing better, more compelling love triangles. The first tip is to develop all three of the characters involved in the love triangle. Your love triangle is going to be much more engaging to the reader if they know and care about all three of the characters involved in the love triangle. In order for this to happen, you need to create three well-rounded characters that each have their own set of goals, motivations, hopes, and fears, and unique ways of looking at the world. All of these things help to shape who each character is and impacts how each one of them is going to respond to the plot events of your story. And if you don't do the work to properly flesh out each of the characters involved in your love triangle, then the reader's probably going to end up either rooting for only one of the suitors or they're not really going to care about the outcome either way. So make sure you develop each one of the characters involved in the love triangle if you want readers to really latch on and care about the outcome. Tip number two is to make sure that both suitors are a viable choice for the protagonist. So your protagonist should have an actual reason for caring about both suitors as well as legitimate reasons for not being able to choose one over the other right away. So if one character is quote unquote perfect for your protagonist and the other suitor is obviously the quote unquote wrong choice, then there's never going to be any suspense for readers over who your protagonist is going to end up with. In other words, this is what's going to make your love triangle feel predictable and your reader is probably going to feel less invested in whatever character is painted as the quote unquote wrong choice. So this means you're going to want to do the work to develop both of the suitors as if they're simply a romantic interest for your protagonist and not a piece of the larger love triangle. So you want to develop each individual relationship with your protagonist in a way that builds tension in the reader. So you can think about things like what kind of people are each of the suitors or how are they going to complement and clash with your protagonist? Or maybe even something like what is your protagonist's future going to look like if they choose either suitor? Tip number three is don't drag out the decision of who your protagonist is going to choose or go back and forth between the suitors too much. And that's because there's no quicker way to stall the forward momentum of your story than to have your main character waffle back and forth between two love interests for too long. So yes, your main character should have a hard time choosing between both potential partners, but if you drag this decision on too long, then you're probably going to annoy your readers and make them lose interest in what's happening in your story. So as an example, if you're familiar with Pride and Prejudice, I want you to imagine if Elizabeth Bennet kept going back and forth between Mr. Wickham and Mr. Darcy over and over and over again. 
you probably wouldn't be as interested in her story, right? So don't try to drag out the decision longer than what's natural and don't go back and forth too much between suitors because it's not gonna have the kind of outcome or effect on readers that you want. Tip number four is to have your character actively choose someone to be with. So at some point, we know your protagonist is going to have to choose who they want to be with. And if you make this decision too easy for your protagonist, so for example, if one of the suitors dies or suddenly turns evil, leaving only one option for your protagonist to choose, then your reader is going to be kind of disappointed, right? And that's because people read stories to see how a character is going to deal with conflict and the change that's happening in their life. And if you don't let your protagonist make an active choice, then you're not really delivering the kind of story that readers want to see. And there's no quicker way to squash a reader's interest in a story than by having some kind of coincidental event swoop in and make the decision super easy for your protagonist. So just remember that you want to have your character make an active decision about who they want to be with. Tip number five is to give insight into who your protagonist is with their choice. So this big decision of who your character wants to be with is more than just a choice, right? It's also an opportunity for your character to resolve his or her internal dilemma or whatever kind of internal conflict they've been facing throughout the story and kind of put a stake in the ground about who they want to be. So if you think about the Hunger Games, for example, Katniss has to choose between Gail, who kind of represents her old life and who she used to be, and Peeta, who represents her new life and kind of the person she's become, right? You can also look at something like Twilight, where Bella has to choose between a relationship with Jacob, who represents more or less a normal human life, and Edward, who represents a more challenging and immortal life. So in both cases, Bella and Katniss have to choose what kind of person they want to be in the world. And this choice of who your protagonist wants to be is far more interesting than simply choosing which suitor is more attractive or a better kisser, right? So think about your love triangle as a way to give readers insight into who your protagonist is with this decision that they're going to make. Tip number six is don't feel like both of the relationships have to start at the same time. Now, this is completely dependent on the kind of story you want to tell and how you want to structure it, but don't feel like your protagonist has to be involved with both suitors at the same time as the only option for building tension. This might seem more dramatic, but there are a lot more subtle ways to create conflict and tension in your story. So for example, your protagonist might only have feelings for one suitor at a time, like in Pride and Prejudice, where... Elizabeth has feelings for Mr. Wickham at first and then slowly comes to care for Mr. Darcy. We get to see the conflict and tension within Elizabeth as she realizes that the man who she thought was right for her, or Mr. Wickham, isn't really who he seems and that the man who she thought was wrong for her, or Mr. Darcy, is a lot more than he seems. Another example is that you can play around with the idea of familiarity versus instant chemistry like in Gilmore Girls. So in Gilmore Girls, Rory's kind of torn between Dean, who's been her longtime boyfriend, and Jess, who is the new guy in town and who she has instant chemistry with. Both of these examples are relatable situations and they can also provide fertile ground for some really good conflict and tension too. So try to be creative about the types of love triangles you include and remember the relationships don't have to start at the same time. Tip number seven is to let your readers know what's at stake. So to keep your love triangle from becoming stale, you want to make sure that there's something at stake for your protagonist. So you can ask yourself questions like, what does your protagonist have to lose or gain with each suitor? So what would happen if your protagonist chooses character B? Or what would happen if your protagonist chooses character C? Are there going to be any kind of regrets that your protagonist has to deal with following the decision he or she makes? And then how is that decision going to impact your overall story? So, for example, in Twilight, if Bella wants to be with Edward for the rest of his immortal life, then that means she needs to become a vampire too, right? So that means going through a painful transformation and quote-unquote losing her soul and distancing herself from her loved ones and watching her friends and family grow old and die, right? So those are some major stakes, and there's stakes for if she decides to go with Jacob too, right? So just make sure with your love triangle, you establish what's at stake so that the readers can feel the weight of your protagonist's decision. Tip number eight is don't neglect the rest of your story. So depending on the kind of story you're writing, the romantic relationship between your characters might carry a different weight. So for example, in a romance novel, the romantic relationship is going to be the main focus of the story. 
but that doesn't mean that you get to ignore everything else that happens, right? So for example, in Twilight, Bella's relationship with Edward is kind of, it takes center stage, but there's still a lot going on around them. Bella's becoming better friends with Jacob. She's trying to fit in at her new school. She's dealing with life at her dad's and she's missing her mom who lives in Arizona, you know, all that stuff, right? And then there's also the whole situation with James and Victoria who want to kill Bella. So compare that to something like The Hunger Games where Katniss's romantic relationships are more like subplots. The main story in The Hunger Games doesn't revolve around the conflict of Katniss trying to decide whether she loves Peeta or Gale best. Instead, the driving force of that story is Katniss's fight for survival. So as you can see, both of these stories have much more going on than just the romantic relationships, but those relationships within the story also carry different weights. So that's just something I think is really important to consider. Tip number nine is to have a reason for including a love triangle in your story. To create a love triangle that your reader is going to appreciate, it needs to exist beyond merely adding drama. So while it doesn't have to be the sole focus of your story, as we talked about in the last tip, it should have a true solid purpose that supports the message of your overall story. And that's because the less petty the purpose behind your love triangle, the more your readers are going to be invested in what happens. So ask yourself things like, what's the reason for your love triangle to exist in the story? Or does the existence or the outcome of your love triangle support the theme of your story? Or why should your reader care about the outcome? So again, you just want to make sure that your love triangle is included for a bigger purpose than just adding drama to your story. Tip number 10 is to explore the different types of conflict within a love triangle. So in your love triangle, as well as your overall story, you want to use different types of conflict to keep your reader guessing right up until the very end. And really, there are two main types of conflict. So there's inner conflict that comes from inside your character. And then there's external conflict that comes from other people in your character's life or, you know, things like acts of nature or circumstances that your characters are in. So while you're developing your love triangle, I want you to ask questions like, how does this love triangle affect my protagonist? And then how does the love triangle affect each one of the suitors in the love triangle? And then how does the love triangle affect my protagonist's friends and family? And how does the love triangle affect my protagonist's world? And if the effects of your love triangle can be felt throughout your story, then that means you're just adding unending value to its existence in your overall story, right? So don't be afraid to explore the effects of your love triangle and how it can help you add both inner and outer conflict to your overall story. So that's it for today. Those are my top 10 tips for writing better, more compelling love triangles. And I know that was a lot, so let me just go over them really quickly for you. Tip number one was to fully develop each of the characters involved in your love triangle. Tip number two was to make sure both suitors are a viable choice for the protagonist. Tip number three was don't drag out the decision or go back and forth with the decision too much. Tip number four was have your character make an active decision about who they want to be with. Tip number five was use your love triangle as an opportunity to give insight into who your protagonist is with their choice. Tip number six was don't think that both relationships have to start at the same time. Tip number seven was to establish what's at stake with the outcome of the love triangle. Tip number eight was don't neglect the rest of your story. Tip number nine was have a solid reason for including a love triangle in your story in the first place. Tip number 10 was use your love triangle to help you explore the different types of conflict in your story. So hopefully these 10 tips are going to help you feel more confident about writing compelling love triangles that aren't predictable or cliche and that can instead have really great results when they're developed well and well written. So that's it for today's show. As always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and showing your support. If you want to check out any of the links I mentioned in this episode, you can find them over at savannagilbo.com forward slash podcast. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the show because there's going to be another brand new episode coming out next week. If you're an Apple user, I'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds to leave a quick rating and review. Your ratings and reviews tell iTunes that this is a podcast that's worth listening to. And in turn, that helps this show get in front of more fiction writers just like you. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, happy writing.